let us move to the discussion on the most important and the only disorder which you need to know with reasonable detail that is familial mediterranean fever so familial mediterranean fever is the most common auto inflammatory syndrome okay now we though know that it is a mendelian inheritance we should definitely know whether it is going to be autosomal dominant or recessive it is going to be autosomal recessive inheritance and the mutation that we see here is in a gene which is called as MEFV it is a gene name which codes for a protein known as pyrin pyrin easy to remember right pyrin related to fever that is a protein it codes for the pyrin is also called as merino string so examiner has freedom to ask you anything he might ask you the merino string mutation is seen in which of the following disorder or he might ask you pyrin mutation is seen in which of the following disorder or he might even ask you MEFV gene mutation is associated with which of the following auto inflammatory syndrome all means same familiar with mediterranean fever now why is this called mediterranean fever because in terms of prevalence highest prevalence is seen in countries in terms of prevalence right high prevalence is seen in countries which are around the mediterranean sea right so what are the important countries first thing you should remember is turkey most of the patients are from the turkey then second is your israel <laughs> Armenia, then Arab world countries and Italy. These are the countries from where you see a lot of patients of familial Mediterranean fever. So most of these countries are situated around the Mediterranean Sea. That is where the name Mediterranean fever comes into picture. Okay. Now, in terms of clinical feature, how these patients present? Let me tell you an important point. Right. We are talking about familial mediterranean fever which can be also called as periodic fever syndrome so the fever episodes are going to be periodic repeatedly patient is going through that we categorize this disorder under auto inflammatory syndrome so every episode of fever is nothing but an inflammatory attack and it is not only the fever that these patients would present with along with fever these patients will present with characteristic two symptoms so you can call it as a triad of familial mediterranean fever fever is one second is arthritis and third is cirrhosis cirrhosis so fever wise these patients present with fever episodes which last for less than two days it can be moderate to high grade and each episode lasts for less than two days the fever does not run for four days five days six days right so if even a case of familial mediterranean fever if the fever episode is continuously running for more than three days you should suspect infections okay then the cirrhosis it can cause pericarditis, peritonitis, pleuritis, aseptic meningitis, but most common presentation is peritonitis. And obviously, this peritonitis is going to be sterile. It's just the inflammation, right? Interleukin 1 is responsible for this inflammation. There is no infection. And it is seen in more than 90% of the episodes where patient presented with fever. So if he presented with fever 10 times, at least 9 times, he will also have Abdominal pain is a complaint and he will have peritonitis as a reason for that. Okay. Then arthritis also accompanying usually fever episodes. Okay. And arthritis here typically monoarthritis. Monoarthritis. One of the joint will show inflammatory changes. Obviously, it's going to be inflammatory arthritis. One of the joint will show inflammatory changes. And this is also going to be transient. Because the inflammatory episode is transient. Fever lasting less than two. So even... The monoarthritis will last less than 2 days or 48 hours. Okay. Now, if you ask me the abdominal involvement, abdominal involvement is obviously in the form of peritonitis only, right, which we have already discussed. Then musculoskeletal symptom-wise, we have already discussed that will be in the form of monoarthritis, which is transient. Neurological, some of these patients might develop aseptic meningitis as part of cirrhositis. Aseptic meningitis. So, they might have signs of meningitis or meningeal irritation. Anyway, if you do the DAP and culture, it will turn out to be negative. Now, there can be skin involvement and this is sometimes the, the feature that leads to diagnosis. Skin involvement is very characteristic. What is that? You might see erysipeloid rash. Erysipeloid rash. Now, what do I mean by that? A rash that resembles, that usually occurs along with fever, that resembles erysipelas. But if you take a tissue biopsy and culture it, you don't grow the streptococci. It is not because of infection. It is part of the auto-inflammatory episode. Erysipeloid rash. And this is a potential MCQ point. Examiner might ask you, erysipeloid rash is seen in which of the following auto-inflammatory syndrome? Familiar Mediterranean fever. Okay. Generally, 
there is no involvement of pi in familial Mediterranean fever. Okay. Now, apart from this, if the condition is long-standing, it can lead to development of amyloidosis. So, sometimes the examiner might ask you, which of the following auto-inflammatory syndrome is associated with increased risk of amyloidosis? Again, we are talking about familial Mediterranean fever. Okay. See, this is about the clinical features. This is a patient who presented with fever, abdominal pain because of peritonitis, and joint pain. And when examined, we got this kind of a picture, right? This is what we describe as erysipeloid rash. Erysipeloid rash, right? Because if if the history of familial Mediterranean fever was not there, I would have called this as erysipeloid as I never probably started antibiotics. But because this patient had this triad, and if I also tell you that patient came from the Mediterranean belt, that is where I would think this case as familial Mediterranean fever. Right? Okay, now, once you are suspecting that this is a case of familial Mediterranean fever, how do you go for diagnosis? Diagnosis obviously depends on ruling out the other possible explanations for repeated episodes of fever. It could be some other autoimmune disorders, right? It could be SLE patient presenting with repeated episodes of fever. So evaluate for all those causes, but have a very high index of suspicion if the patient is coming from the Mediterranean belt. And finally, the confirmation happens by genetic studies, right? Identify the pyrin or marino strain mutation and then your diagnosis is done. Now, coming to the management. How do you manage these patients? Okay. See, merely giving the anti-inflammatory drugs during the episode of fever or the inflammation is not adequate because these patients are at risk of developing amyloidosis. So, the inflammatory cytokines that are elevated should be tapered down so that the amyloidosis risk is reduced. So, we treat most of the patients diagnosed with the familiar Mediterranean fever with colchicine as our drug of choice. So, if there's an MCQ asking what is the drug of choice, it is colchicine which we give in the dose of 1.2 to 1.8 milligrams per day. But many patients may not respond well. So if they are refractory to colchicine, what do we do? Now, under what heading we studied about the familiar Mediterranean fever? Interleukin-1 related, right? It is one of the interleukin-1 related auto-inflammatory syndrome. So we can target interleukin-1, right? So we can use anti-interleukin-1 drugs. Can you quote the examples? Anti-IL-1 drugs? Right. So anakinara is that. You can use that or you can use another drug called as canakinumab. Canakinumab. This can be used as agents if the colchicine fails to get the inflammatory episodes under control. 